It's a sight many Berliners had never beheld. East Berliners strolling the streets of West Berlin, taking in as many of the sights and sounds as their senses would allow. More about it from CBS News correspondent Richard Schlesinger. Berliners changed the face of their city and made a little more history today. East German police removed sections of the wall, opening up new border crossings, punching holes along the concrete barrier that divides this city. There's a hole in the wall. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a big hole, yes. At the new openings in the wall, people collected souvenir pieces of cement, mementos of a time they all hope will soon pass. But the openings are still just small holes in more than 20 miles of concrete. There is now a popular chant in West Berlin that says, the wall must go. The East Germans have hinted that may be possible, but not now. Today's moves make it easier for neighbor to meet neighbor, for Berlin to seem a little more like one city. What is West Berlin like? It's a free world. It's a free world. I think, I don't know. I will see. This city has proven to be a powerful lure to East Berliners who continue to pack the stores and jam the streets. But just below the euphoria, the West German government is worried. While many, if not most, of these East Germans will probably return home, West Germany is already inundated with refugees. And people are starting to ask, where will all the new arrivals live? Where will they work? They don't have to worry about the Grunwald family from East Berlin. They enjoyed the color and the street life in West Berlin, but they have no plans to move here. Ulrika Grunwald says her children have their friends and the family has a home in the east. While Berliners cheer the arrival of their neighbors, the government is wondering how many will go back. And for those who decide not to go back, there is a trainload of U.S. aid headed to West Berlin, expected here tomorrow morning. It's carrying things like beds and food and toys, and all of it is donated and paid for by U.S. servicemen. Dan? Richard, what's the mood of the East Germans you've talked to? Boy, Dan, you really get the feeling that they feel like they're in an amusement park. I was in one of West Berlin's biggest department stores this afternoon, and their eyes were as big as saucers. They'd never seen as many things to buy of the quality that they can get here. But surprisingly, a lot of them told me that they plan to go back home. Richard Schlesinger, thanks. Eric Ingberg has been covering the East German side of the story, and he reports that many of the East Germans are crossing into the West empty-handed and then returning to their homes with the first fruits of freedom. East Germans are so anxious for a first look at West Berlin that again today they cheerfully endured long waits and unprecedented traffic jams at the border. As the seemingly endless lines at the checkpoints demonstrate, a government decree to open the borders is one thing, Actually, getting your car across the border is quite another. The delays stem partly from the surprise nature of the decision. The attempt to appease public opinion by throwing open the border came without warning from beleaguered party officials, and it caught bureaucrats without a plan to handle the rush. The East Germans coming back from their one-day outing across the border looked like people who had just had a new shopping center open down the street a shopping center called West Berlin. Many young adults were seeing it for the first time. The variety in the Western stores is incredible, he says. There are 500 different salamis. You don't need that many. While expressing amazement at the variety lacking in the East, some of the East Berliners were put off by the higher prices that West Berliners in a market economy uncontrolled by the government pay for staples like food. This family came a hundred miles by train. Who's got the elephant? Who's got the bear? For them, the fruits of Western capitalism, previously out of reach, boil down to a weightlifting magazine for dad and two stuffed animals for the kids. Back from a shopping trip with a new cassette deck, this East Berliner says his government must still prove its right to rule, and that can come only through free elections. For now, the people of East Germany are reveling in the chance to buy Western goods. Their government has bought time. Experts aren't sure how much. Time to grapple with the ever louder demands for an end to one-party rule. Eric Engberg, CBS News, East Berlin.
Some of West Germany's Warsaw Pact allies are applauding what's been happening here. A Czech newspaper said the wall was a fossil, but that the border between the two Germanys remains intact. Hungary, undergoing changes of its own, said for all intents and purposes, the wall is already gone. But in hardline Romania, silence and a news blackout. Bob? Dan, despite all the euphoria, there must be, it must be almost frightening to the German people to start thinking about these changes, although they've wanted them for so long. The fact is that uh, we're changing the face of Europe, or it's changing from the way it's been for 40 years. Just the fact that it is changing must give people a start. Well, it does, and after the immediate euphoria and the great joy and deep-felt celebration of it all, even here in Germany, second thoughts are beginning to appear. Some people saying, look, all of this uh, scares me because it's moving so fast. Everything from what is it going to do to the West German economy to you can imagine the French and those who live in Belgium and the Netherlands and in Great Britain saying, this is all fine, but let's don't move too quickly on this subject of reunifying the two Germanys. But Bob, I think this is the important thing, that even at the top, the, the leadership of the two Germanys, there's a sense that things are in the saddle, that no one can control events, that in Moscow they're, they're as surprised as almost anybody at how quickly things have moved and uh, afraid of where things may go. So there is this sense of, of the center must hold, but nobody quite knows where the center is. And you know that earlier today this was described in geopolitical terms as an earthquake that the Berlin Wall was the Andreas Fault, and the Andreas Fault uh, opened up, and that on the geopolitical earthquake scale, this is somewhere between a 9 and a 10, and when you have that kind of cataclysmic event, nobody quite knows how deep and how long-lasting the ramifications may be. And I suppose the next event to watch for is if indeed the East Germans do hold free elections. Does anybody there have any prediction yet as to when that might happen, or if indeed they think it is going to happen? Not everybody thinks it will happen, not everybody thinks it will happen soon. Nobody has a precise date, but everybody thinks it'll happen sooner as opposed to later, Bob. Thank you, Dan.